This is the second video which provides detailed instructions for how to use Git to collaborate with others on LaTeX projects. So in the previous video, we created this project where we made a bunch of different commits. And we're now going to push this project up to a remote repository. So to do that, I'm going to go into GitHub and I'm going to go to my repositories. I'm going to create a new one, call this test, and I'm going to leave this public just for convenience. You can make it private if you like. And it's important to select SSH instead of HTTPS. And then this is the key line here, git remote add origin, and then the address. Okay, so if I go back in here, and I do control T. So we're inside the project folder and we have this um, git prompt. Okay, and I'm gonna cut and paste that in and run it. Okay, so if I now do git remote dash dash, I think it's just dash v, um, it will bring up that I've added these two, this fetch and a push, basically a target um, for my repository. Okay, so now if we open up um, lazy git, then I can do shift notice first these question marks here okay so now if I do shift P it's gonna ask me on the first time is this where you want to push to and yes it is okay so now these question marks have turned to zero zero which basically means it's now linked to this remote repository and I am up to date okay so to see that let's refresh over here Okay, and sure enough, here's our single document with a few lines in it. Okay, great. So let's say we make some new change. Um, here is a new change. I'm gonna save that and space GG. Okay, we've modified our file. We'll commit this and we'll just say change. Okay, so notice now I have a one here. This tells me that there is one commit, namely this one down here, which exists on my local machine, which is not up to date with the repository. Basically, I have one change beyond the history which exists on the on the repository. And so in order to catch the repository up, I'm going to do shift P. It's important to say that you don't have to do you don't have to push the changes up every time you can let these stack up, you can have 15 of them, and then just push changes occasionally. Um, and whenever you do push those changes, it will update. Um, see, here's the new change. And that's nice. So it's a way to basically back up your files without an external hard drive. Um, and it's just convenient. You can push whenever, whenever you need to. Okay, um, so that's that. Um, so for personal use, um, that's about it. Um, you know, you can carry on making changes, pushing them when you feel like. Um, you can make branches, as we discussed, and you can push those branches up and so on. Um, but it gets a little bit more complicated when you have multiple parties involved. So in order to get a sense of how this would work, um, let's create a new, let's link someone else. So I'm gonna do this all from the same computer um, but this will simulate two different computers talking to this same repository online. So to begin with, uh, we're inside test and I'm going to go over here to settings and I'm going to say manage access. And I would then invite a collaborator, but since I'm going to play both roles here and I'm already a collaborator, I don't need, I can skip this step. Um, but typically you would invite your collaborator and then once they have the invitation, um, assuming this is a private project, uh, this one is not, but they would then be able to access uh, this online. And let's see, they could go into, um, it's easier when it's big. They would then click code and select SSH and they would copy this to the clipboard. Okay. Okay, so they basically have this location now. So we're going to play this other role. So space um, E, 
And I'm going to go to documents. I'm going to create just a new location for this. So shift A, test B. OK, and let's now, um, yeah, let's now quit out of this space Q. And let's go into there, CD documents test B. OK, and now we'll do git clone and control V. Um, so that is what, so now we're going to clone all those documents into that folder. Okay, great. And so now um, let's open it up. So we'll do first ls to see what's in there. Okay, let's, so one thing to notice is that um, it does actually create, it brings the whole folder. So it doesn't clone in all those documents, uh, you know, the, the project files and stuff. It actually clones in the whole folder. So whichever folder you use, that should be sort of the, the parent directory that you want um, this new project to be deposited in. Um, in this case, it doesn't matter much that there's some redundancy. Okay, so now we're in our test project. Uh, it says there's a project being tracked by Git in there. That's good. Um, let's see what's in there. We have this test.nd. Um, okay, and so now let's uh, open that up with them. Okay, so we're inside this same project um, in two places. So right now we're, here's the fifth window down here. If I go back here, now we're in the fourth window. Um, yeah, so you can see my cursor is in two places at least in these two windows. Okay, so here's the new window, um, space GG, and it says, okay, you're up to date. And that makes sense because we just pulled the files down from the repository. Of course, we're going to be up to date. Um, but let's say we make now some changes. So let's say, here is a change by the second user, user B. GG, we'll stage that, we'll commit it, we'll say user B. Okay, so now it says you have one commit which reaches past the history on the GitHub repository. And so let's, um, Let's push that, so shift P. Okay, so now let's go back. Here's our other project. Um, so previously this project was up to date, um, but let's now open it up. And notice now this changes to one. So this says, okay, you have one, there's one commit which exists on the remote repository which reaches beyond the history you have on this local machine. OK, so we can pull this down by doing lowercase p. OK, and so sure enough, there's our second, our second, uh, or the, the line that user b added. OK, so now let's say, say I change this line. Um, say I make change. Um, uh, let's make this all caps, and we save that. Uh, meanwhile, let's say user B has decided to make this word all caps. Okay, and so the point of my doing this is that there's two changes to the same line, and it's not going to know which one to, to choose. Um, so let's commit both of these. So G, so this one is uh, second. Okay, so now it says you're one one pass to the repository online. Um, and space GG, and let's call this one change. Okay, and same thing, I'm one pass to the repository online. Okay, so the question is, how are we going to resolve these conflicts? Um, what is the standard protocol? So typically, you know, if you have two different people working on different machines, they won't know in which ways they've departed, and they won't know if they're if they're if they're changing the same things or not, um, and so one of them is going to push up to the repository before the other, right? So let's say let's say user A does so shift P. So that should present no issue. Zero zero. Okay. So user A is up to up to date. That's good. Let's double check that over here. View code. Okay. So. Here's change, great. So that's what user A did. Okay, now we're over here. User B turned second to all, 
all caps. Let's do space GG. Okay, so notice now there's a one here. So user B should not try to just push these changes because the conflict will then show up in the repository itself. And there's kind of no one there to resolve them. So instead what you want to do is you want to pull down the changes. If there's any conflicts, you resolve them on your local machine using the hardware there. And then once you've resolved all the conflicts, then you push all those changes back up to the repository. So yeah, we're going to do that. So we're going to do lowercase p. Um, and it says error, basically. And it gives us this uu. Basically, there's, there's conflicts. Okay, we can look at them. It says, okay, look, there's these two lines, and they're which one? Okay, so let's quit out of this. Okay, so here it is. It basically adds this this marker syntax, um, and let's say, well, let's say both of those changes are pretty good. So I'm gonna, oops, um, delete this and delete this and. Let's uh, VA Word. Okay. So, good. That's what I want. Um, and so it is a little manual, but this doesn't happen too often, hopefully. And when it does happen, you get to see what the two alternatives are, and then it's up to you to stitch them together in wh whichever way you prefer. Um, okay. So now let's GG. And so now it says all merge conflicts resolved. Uh, it finds no uh, none of that marker syntax. Um, do you want to continue? Yes, I do. Okay, so now notice it has two commits um, on my local machine. So we had this one where we just made change all caps. And then in the second one, we also basically pulled down this change from the from GitHub. Um, and so now that's on our second on our machine too. Okay, so now we're going to push these up, shift P, and we're in a good position to do that because we see that um, we have all the most recent versions, um, more recent than what is on GitHub. So there, there'll be no conflict in pushing up to the repository. Okay, so now user B is now up to date. Um, however, uh, if we go back to user A, space GG, um, there's going to be some new changes. Um, because we did this this combination of the two changes and if we get out of here you can see second is not capitalized um, so space gg let's pull those down lowercase p okay and now second is capitalized so basically now we're all up to date um, if for any reason this first user says oh i really don't want you, these to be changed um, well then you'd have to go back <laughs> You'd be back in a conflict situation if you push those changes back up. Um, and so, yeah, at some point, you know, you'll have to negotiate with each other which, which changes you're going to keep. But potentially, you could just be pushing back and forth the same conflicts um, if you're really discreet about how a certain part should be. Um, so that, at least, I hope, demonstrates um, how to resolve merge conflicts or, um, yeah, merge conflicts and... Um, and yeah, how to collaborate with others um, in using GitHub. So that is setting up collaborations. And I went through the collaboration protocol. Um, there are, I have included a few resources. Um, some of these are pretty basic and just kind of go over the basic functionality. Um, and then others are a little more detailed. And then this last one kind of tries to lift the curtain a little bit and show you, you know, give you some sense of what's going on underneath, you know, the kind of data structure that you're building um, as you make all these Git commits. So hope that's helpful and um, helps you collaborate on LaTeX projects.